Astro is excited to announce three revolutionary products. The first one, React 19 Action Support. And second, RPC Server Actions. And third, a breakthrough form data validator. React 19, server actions, form data. These are not three separate products. It's one product and we're calling it Astro Actions. Actions, the best way to couple your front end and back end together with TypeScript. Now, in the before times, when you made an API in Next.js or Astro, you would use REST endpoints. And when you receive a request, you would have to parse the body. But you also gotta make sure all the properties are defined, the content type is defined before you parse it, the dynamic query params are defined, the thermostat's set to 68 degrees before you go to sleep. Then you make your fetch call from the client with that beautiful JSON stringify. To be honest, it was a lot of setup. And if you wanted to make a refactor, you could update the params on the client and then hop on the subway to pages slash API junction over to dynamic query param station. Then it turns out the D train was actually on the F train from 6 to 9 p.m. So now you get a type error. Actions get rid of all of this. You just write your backend that actually accepts JavaScript as an input, and then you call it on the client with the same types. If you want a refactor, you just command click and you teleport to the server implementation or back again. It's great, but I'll be honest, those server actions in React, they're kind of bland, you know? Let's look at form data. It's cool that you can just send a form request and get it right here, but it's just as annoying to parse as our first example, because you gotta do dot get for all of the values, check if everything's defined, and for special inputs like number, you don't get a number, you get a string. For checkboxes, you don't get a boolean, you get another string with the value on. Yuck. Now, here at AstroCorp, we think we can do better. Have you seen TRPC, where you can check your inputs with a Zod validator? It's really cool because it's a runtime check, so you can validate and bounce bad requests at the door. So let's take our basic beef patty here and add some define action buns to it. And then you can slot in this little input zesty Zod Chick-fil-A sauce, and you can validate your know, JSON request. But what if you have forms? Well, let us add a little accept form property. Now it will accept form data and it will auto parse those numbers, those booleans, those files. So you get a type safe object. Now the client story. I love that server actions just get called on the client with the same name. So let's keep that. But what about error states? In server actions, you could just return an error but then you always get an okay status code, even when it's not okay. So what if we copy TRPC some more? They let you throw an error from the server with the status code you want. So let's just do that. And then on the client, you can enter tan stack query mode. You just add dot safe, and now you get an object with either data or an error. So you could catch error messages, catch validation errors for some nice little banners under your form inputs. It does it all. So if server actions were just the cheeseburger, Astro built the double quarter pounder. Let's use actions in a real project. I'm showing you the best website on the internet, my personal website, and I'm adding some dynamic functions to this otherwise static blog. We have our post pulled up here, and I wanted to add a little like button to this post. I already set it up with some squooshiness and spring effects. Check out this short if you wanna learn how I did that. But you'll notice the like counter stays the same. That's because we don't have a backend right now, and we need to persist these in some data store so we know how many likes every post has. Now to really show that actions work anywhere, we're gonna start with a web component demo. Boo. Don't say boo, I get it. We're gonna show off React 19 in a moment as well. We're also using a little library from GitHub to make web components easier to work with. Don't worry too much about the syntax, just know that we're storing likes in local storage with this variable right here. 
and we have a function called toggle like that gets toggled on and off whenever you click on the button. And we wanna call our backend after this is set in local storage. To create a backend, you can go over to this file right here, source actions index. Similar to TRPC, you create a big object of all of your actions, and you can break these out into nested objects, store them in different files. As long as I pipe through this server export, you can import them from client code safely. To create our first action, I'll create it inside this object right here. We'll call it like, and use the define action utility that's coming from astro colon actions. It accepts two parameters. The first one is the handler that takes in our input and also the API context. So if you have middleware, you're authenticating users, checking cookies or headers, it's all available on this object here. To validate that input, you can add the input field. This is our zesty Zod sauce. We're gonna take JSON for this example as a Zod object and accept two parameters. First, whether or not you have liked the post using your local storage value. We also need our post slug. This can just be a string value, or if you wanna get fancy, you can use Zod refinement to check if that post actually exists. I'm using Astro Content Collections to go to my blog and check if that slug exists with the little Boolean right here. And if it doesn't exist, we'll bounce it as a 400 bad request. No validation in our handler. But because it's public, we also want to rate limit requests because you might be spoofing local storage doing bad things. We'll say is rate limited and we'll check whether you are rate limited. Passing through that context again and we'll implement this using a Redis store. And if you are rate limited, we can return an error. You can use action error to get real status codes so you can actually debug in your console. And we help you with autocomplete for all the HTTP codes written out in plain English. So if you need a specific code, like too many requests, easy enough to add it right here. And if I check out, check if rate limited, it returns true every time. This is a stub to make sure everything is working kind of how we expect. To call this, we can head to our client code. This is just a script tag. We will reach for the actions object. This comes from Astro colon actions as well. And it will have our nested object of all of our actions. In this case, like. And it accepts some JSON input, so pass it through as an object, as God intended. Say this.liked, post slug, this.post slug. And you can see the result is a type save value, likes as a number. For now, we don't really care about that. We're just gonna see how the action goes through when we click on our button. So I'll click on this for the first time. And you can see right here, oh, look at that. A human readable status code with the name of our action. This is so nice in production when you're tracking down why an action failed. Remember this demo from React Conf. Lee Rob, I love you, but this curl example has me a little afraid. Calling a random hash code that represents my backend is very weird. Since Astro is using this TRPC model, we can give you a readable name and status code. Now let's implement these functions we stubbed out, starting with our rate limiter. To create this, I'm gonna use Upstash with Redis. By the way, thank you to Upstash for sponsoring this video. To create a Redis store, it's as simple as importing Redis for your deployment host of choice. I'm using Cloudflare because I'm cool, but if you're boring, there's also, you know, Node or Vercel or whatever. And then to create a rate limiter, I will use their library to create from a Redis store. Create the rate limit object and pass in the Redis instance along with the limit that you want to apply. We'll use the sliding window that accepts how many requests you want to allow, let's say 100, and the time frame for those requests. I'll use one day because if you're liking a post more than 100 times a day, you're probably someone trying to spam the system. Now, before talking to Redis, I'm also gonna hash this IP address. You don't need to, since we're not storing personally identified information. Go away, GDPR! <sighs> but it makes me feel a little bit better. Now, we can check whether or not you bypass the rate limiter by calling await limiter.limit on that hash code. Then from this function, since we're checking if you are rate limited, we'll say if you're not successful, we're gonna error out. With that implemented, now we can update our likes. There's a few ways we could store the likes. Maybe we wanna use AstroDB, which gives you a SQLite file, great local experience, deploy anywhere, but 
I like using the minimal tool for the job. And all we need is a slug and the number of likes. It's a key value situation. And believe it or not, Redis is great at doing this again. So let's just do it, why not? Reach for the Redis instance and say, if you have liked the post, we will return the number of likes based on redis.increment. This will increment a counter for whatever key you pass in. We'll use a prefix based on the action we're taking, which is likes on a post. And the return value will just be the new number. And it'll insert a new value if it doesn't already exist. And for a dislike, you can imagine we will decrement that counter. Very similar logic. But one little check, we don't want it to ever go negative. We will implement get likes first. This will check whether the likes are greater than zero before taking this action. Now, I'll be honest, I was hoping for a simple solution here, but it was a little bit obnoxious to add. You can see we can get the value out and then parse it to a number, check is nan, then return the likes. If you know a way to convert straight to a number from a Redis call, let me know, but this is enough to get going. Up here, we can check whether or not the likes are greater than zero. Then we can move that check inside of there and return likes zero for any other case. With all of that implemented, let's try this on the front end. We need a bit of feedback to actually know the result of this action. We were kind of firing and forgetting. So, you know, there's a few things that could come out of this, right? You get the total number of likes to update the UI, or you get one of those errors like forbidden or too many requests. To handle both cases, you can chain .safe to get a full type safe object. This will have both data and error as a union type, kind of like Tanstack query. The error is an action error to check the status code and data will be the likes number. If there is an error, we can add some messages to the client, keep it really simple and just update a text box. If it's too many requests, slow down. Otherwise, we just say, oops, we failed to update for whatever reason. And sure enough, we see our like counter incrementing and decrementing beautifully. And just to make sure our rate limiter is also working, we can reduce our window size to something really, really small, like the number five. And now we should see, slow down, you've already been rate limited. All right, we have conquered JSON endpoints using web components, using all of our favorite tech. But what about forms? What about React? Well. I have another example for you. At the end of my blog post, I want to have a newsletter sign up that accepts an email and a little checkbox here for occasional music recommendations. And when you submit an email, we want to put it in our button down email list. And instead of calling them directly, I want to show custom UI. So we're going to create an action that proxies request over to button down and returns custom codes to show the right banners. I'll head back to actions. And I've already implemented this off camera. Yes, a little mining off cam. You can see subscribe to newsletter. Takes inputs the same way we did before. The email, the music recs as a Boolean. Type safe value right here, and we will call the button down URL with all of that info. If there's an error, we can show custom messages like you're already subscribed. Otherwise, show a success message. To call this, we have a brand new React 19 component. This means you have access to use action state, which lets you call a backend and track the result on state. Also show pending UI when things are loading. It's super freaking powerful and you can pass in any Azure action you want. For this though, we will need a little helper. This comes from Astro's React adapter called with state. This will let you pass in an action and apply progressive enhancement info. So if you're in a zero JavaScript scenario, React is taking too long to load, the form still submits, and we'll show that off in a little bit. To pass in your function, call with state and wrap it around one of those actions. This comes from the same place as our web component. Now we have subscribe to newsletter. We'll add dot safe so we can get either data or error. Oh no, it's accepting form data because we're enhancing it, but we set this up as a JSON endpoint. Dang it, if only there was a way to update this easily. Oh, well, we could go to definition, but <clears throat> what is the rewrite we need to add form data? If only I could just keep my validator and keep going. Oh, wait, there is. There's something called accept. If you add accept form, this will now update our types to accept form data and we'll smartly match this to the validation object. So the email will be a string. The checkbox will be a Boolean, how you expect it and the rest of your API remains unchanged. Let's see this in action. 
I can add an email that I already know exists on the newsletter just to check that case. Please don't spam me. You can see a nice pending state and oops, looks like you're already subscribed. We also see a nice 409. So again, human readable error if something bad happens. But what about the good case? We'll add an email that I know is not in the list. Hit subscribe again. We get a little longer wait and check your inbox for a confirmation. So freaking cool, end to end, form validation, we love it. Now, one last party trick. Let's disable JavaScript to see how this works if you know React hasn't loaded yet for whatever reason. I will again add an email that already exists and now you can see the full page refreshes and will still run our backend function. Whoa, so you get the new banner right here. You have already subscribed and on our backend, it's actually gonna post it using middleware. So you still see the 409, but now it's handling it for all form requests on the page. Progressive enhancement that you don't have to think about. That's the best kind of API. So that's really everything. We have forms, JSON, access from any framework. If you wanna try it out, you can head over to Astro 4.9. This has all the tools that you need, and we have a blog post explaining how React actions work. Also, shout out to Upsass for making a killer backend for this. Rate limiting and incrementing, something I never set up in my life, and it was really easy with this tool. So check it out if you enjoyed. Otherwise, you know, like, subscribe, more content coming soon. See you in the next one.